So here's a list of just some of the networks that I often talk about in the class I teach in the department, which I'm teaching this semester, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and you can see that you know, to define a network, you simply need to choose a definition for what a vertex is and a definition for what that pairwise interaction is. And so this is a huge list. And in fact, this, the social thing here is only two things there. But really, there's like a bajillion uh, here. In, in fact, Facebook is not really one kind of social network, but rather it's a whole assortment of social networks because there are many different types of edges on Facebook. You can have edges between a person and a group. You can have edges between two people. You can have edges between a photo and a person, et cetera. And all these things represent, in some ways, distinct kinds of networks. So my interest in this is that networks provide a very uh, a rigorous representation for thinking about how to structure the complexity of social and biological systems. And that gives us a way of thinking about how you get large-scale patterns from the, the small-scale interactions. Okay. So let's start with just very basics. What is network structure, really? This is a picture of some structure, some network that I cooked up. And uh, really, what we mean by network structure is that it's what makes the data different from noise. And for a network, noise means a random graph in which we have some coin with some bias on it, for instance. And for every pair of interactions, we simply flip that coin to decide if there's a connection there. If we flip the same coin for all the vertices, that's a pretty boring network. Really, we were interested in more uh, interesting kinds of structure. And that's what we want to try to dig into, to try to understand, for a given pair of vertices in some network, what determines whether they're linked or not. If we can build a model, either learning that from the data or building analytically, that gives us enormous insight into both what the structure of the system is and how it might behave in the future. So uh, structure is what makes a network different from a random graph. It also helps us compress the data. If we understand where the patterns are, then we can represent them more compactly. And then we learn something about 